Well, I hope we're not late for the reading. Savannah Dakar is one of my all-time favorite writers. I mean, I just wish you told me you were going to be late. I would have met you here. I'm sorry. My relief call and said he was coming, then he got a flat tire. I hope you don't walk into the middle of her reading. I just cannot believe I'm going to be in the same room with such a great author. Now, why didn't you tell me before y'all went to college together? Because I knew you'd bug me to get in touch with her, and she probably doesn't even remember me. When I was a freshman at Spelman, she was my senior big sister. Showed me around campus, gave me advice. Back then, she was Dolores Mickleberry from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. <laughs> she was such an amazing girl. Every time she spoke, it just was, it was so profound. Well, just like her writing, I mean, the way she has with words, they just come alive. Just promise me something. If she doesn't remember who you are, are you gonna introduce me? She probably doesn't even remember me. Locked. Oh, we missed it. We missed it. It was at five o'clock. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. My one chance to meet a literary giant, my own personal yeah. hero, and now I'm not even gonna get an autograph. I thought you said the car was here. It's on its way. This car. Oh, that's her. This is your dance. Renee Jackson, is that you? Dolores. You better not be calling me that. I'm strictly Savannah now. How are you? <laughs> oh, we have got to catch up. Please tell me you know where I can get a decent glass of champagne. Oh, just the place. Thank God. Someone I can actually talk to you. I don't believe it kicks in this town. Oh, Emmy, 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 come on. Savannah, there's so much catching up to do. I'll call you later. Renee, girl, you have no idea what a gruel this book tour has been. 25 cities in three weeks, folks pulling on me left and right. Savannah, why don't you forget about Newark and take a break? Come stay with me. Oh, child, don't tempt me. I need some R&R. &R. I am on serious people overload. I promise you, nobody yes, will disturb me. My place is way better than a hotel. Where's your assistant? Call her over here. <laughs> Renee Jackson, look at you, telling me what to do. I remember when you were the perfect spellman lady, marching dutifully to chapel with your hair in a flip, carrying your tiny little purse. Oh, I still carry little purses. Yeah, but that's Kate Spade. Hello. <laughs> Savannah, Savannah, your plane, it leaves in an hour. You have to be in Newark by nine. Darling, the only thing I have to do is stay black and die. <laughs> Book me another flight. I'm visiting my little sister. Excellent. <laughs> Look at you. Girl, I remember when when you used to be wearing those those loud colored dashikis with elephant hair bracelets and an afro a mile high. <laughs> yeah, but when I first got to Spelman, the dress code was so strict we couldn't even wear pants on campus. I remember you're the one who led the revolt that changed all the rules. Where did you get the nerve to lock up all those trustees in the administration building at gunpoint? It was the only way we could get black studies on campus. It was all for the sisterhood, baby. Dignity, femininity, pride. The true blue Spellman tradition. <laughs> so, Renee, I give you three years here in Birmingham Tops. I mean, Corbett Burnout I can buy, but you're gonna go brain dead here. I don't know about that. My law practice is pretty challenging, and I'm, I'm connecting with people. Speaking of which, I have a friend who is dying uh, to meet you. Your friend has a friend, and she has a neighbor. Renee, I'm tired. Didn't you just promise me you are gonna keep people away from me? All right, you got it. <laughs> Mr. Carr, there's a journalist from the Birmingham News outside. He wants to know if he can just have a minute of your Beverly. time. Beverly. Yes. Beverly, you know what's in my contract. I do three interviews a day before 6 o'clock. After that, I don't want to think about signing autographs, saying something witty, or fixing my hair. <sighs> Pay the bill. Girl, let's get out of here. Uh, oops, there's a photographer. Shoot. So did you have fun? It looks like you had fun. What are you talking about? Haven't you seen today's paper? Noted author Savannah.
Savannah Dakar hits the Birmingham scene with local attorney Renee Jackson. So what hot spots did you hit? Well, I went to Molina's for dinner. Oh, yeah, and then? And then, uh, she wanted to be alone and left. Sorry you weren't there. Yeah, me too, especially considering my husband is out of town, and I thought that me and my best friend were going to be spending Saturday night at the reading and then getting some laughs at the comedy pub. I'm sorry, I mean, that happened so spontaneously. Well, that's OK. What are you doing today? <sighs> I don't know. Probably going to stay at home, take care of a few things. Oh. So tell me about Savannah. Is she like you remember? I mean, can I call you back? Buddy's really got to go out. All right. Well, just remember, I don't have anything to do today except clip coupons, drive over to the cost club, pick up some generic cereal, and some toilet paper. So I'll be waiting. Bye. Bye-bye. Honey. This kitchen is gorgeous. Where do you keep the Tabasco? So early? Not for me. My body clock is still on London time. That is not Tabasco. <laughs> That's my mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. She usually comes by on Sunday after church just to catch up. Hey, baby. Brought you some late bloomers. Mama? Mm -hmm. There's somebody in the kitchen, and I don't want you to make a big deal. Oh, is it Bill? No, it's not Bill. It's Savannah Dakar, the famous writer. I went to school with her. I gave you one of her books, remember? Oh, yeah, that girl that led that demonstration. Changed her name from Dolores Mickleberry. I'd have changed my name, too, if it was that weird. Don't call her that, and just, just, just act normal, OK? Don't make a big fuss. I don't need you to tell me how to act around famous people. Shoot. I knew Martin Luther King. Next time that girl is humped to dumped Savannah, it's so nice to see you. Do you remember me? Of course I do. From the first day you and your husband moved Renee into the dorm, you made those beautiful curtains for her room. Well, you'll have to forgive me. I wouldn't have recognized you. I do have one of your books. Oh, really? Which one? Soul Messenger, Sweet Impatience, The Adored? Well, I, I don't think I can remember the name of it. Come think of it. I don't even think I finished reading it. Oh, Mama's eyes get so tired. I'll be happy to inscribe it for you. Well, that would be lovely. But I hope I still have it around. I just cleaned out Renee's room, had a yard sale. You cleaned out my room? Yes, honey. I'm taking in a border. A border? Yes, he's moving in day. Now, I know you wish I could stay in this, but I can't. Savannah, it was a pleasure. No, the pleasure was mine. And I'll try and find that book. And congratulations on winning that award. The Pulitzer, Mama. Mom, I want you to know that I'm very concerned about your decision to, to take in a border. Well, then come around the house, meet Frank. See what nice man he is. Bye. Frank, move in in peace. Mama, why are you doing this? What is he doing here? I could use a little company. It gets awful lonely in this house now that you're gone. Why didn't you tell me you were lonely? Where did you find this man? At the church. Would you stop worrying? I advertised on church bulletin board. The last man you brought home from church turned out to be a stalker. What is his full name? Frank Dillingsworth. He works at St. Andrew's Hospital, and he is a nurse. Well, where did he live before? Here? With his mama, Tilly May. She died a few months ago, and he had to move out of the house he was raised in. My heart goes out to him. Here, I'm sure this is because you're still worried about money. I am not worried over that, and I don't want your money. Take it in me. You should buy your mother a better gift than that pine cone. No, thanks. Artie, I'll call you a dollar for fireworks, Tully 50 cents for losing a bet about baseball, and Teresa $3. She's blackmailing me for finding you in the house three times. She is? Well, maybe I shouldn't come over anymore. No, I, I want you to come to my house. I just hate that my parents won't change their mind about letting you come over. 